What's up guys, I'm back, it's your boy Palacio and I cannot be more happy that I'm able to do a movie review. The movie theaters have been closed for, you know, several months and this is my first time going back and watching a movie. Today's movie review is going to be over The New Mutants, directed by Josh Boone. IMDB gave this movie a 5.9 and Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 29%. Completely disagree with this, I thought this was an amazing movie, especially um, my first time back going to the theater. It was supposed to come out s several months ago, um, but there was a whole bunch of delays and everything. But but this movie I thought was awesome. I thought that it was a great uh, refreshing pace of the X-Men and Marvel cinema cinematic universe. It was it, it definitely had that uh that Logan feel where Logan was rated R and this film was rated PG-13 and honestly I don't know how I don't know how they got away with uh, PG-13 for this film because they curse a lot there's a lot of you know sexual tension in this and then they have like um, a lot of violence. Um, it's not like gore violence but it's I, I don't think I would take my 13 year old to see this movie. Well, I don't think a normal person should see, take a 13 year old to see this movie. It was definitely like up there with Logan, if if you know what I mean. This movie's main character is Danny Moonstar, uh, played by Blue Hunt, I think it's her name, B L U Hunt. She uh, plays a Native American and uh, she has these powers that we're trying to figure out through the whole film. Uh, she does a pretty good job. I think that the uh, supporting cast does a lot better at acting than she does. And that that's not necessarily a take away from her. Um, the beginning of this movie starts with a, a Native American quote. They say that there's two bears in you. I've heard this quote as two wolves, but in this movie they do two bears and I think that they changed it for the sake of the movie because uh, she like projects a bear in in her dreams or whatever when she's uh, psychic or I don't know it's not psychic but like she brings out her dreams I I'm not Native American so I don't know personally if it's the correct quote or not but I just the way that I've heard it is there's two wolves in every person and in this movie they do two bears it's not a huge difference but I just noticed it at the very beginning uh, the opening scene scene is okay um, they have her waking up and there's something going on in her reservation her dad tries to take her out keep her safe and then he dies and then she wakes up in a hospital so that's where they stand I think it's a good beginning they set the tone of this movie that it's gonna be kind of dark um, and you know by no means it's not gonna be like a happy Avengers um, or X-Men movie I think that's a good thing um, this movie is a lot more realistic uh, it's still like a superhero movie, so it's not like set in real, real life. But uh, it's definitely more believable than Avengers, where there's people flying around everywhere. You know, the, these uh, these kids, basically, they're teenagers that have these powers. They're doing laundry and they're washing dishes and stuff like that. And it just makes the, the characters a little more uh, realistic. And you can kind of feel for what they're going through a little more, as opposed to, like, Captain America, who's doing all this crazy stuff. And, you know, you, you see him more, like, as an idol. And these kids are just kids with powers, so it's pretty cool. So Anya Taylor is a supporting cast member in this movie. And I think that she does the best at acting. Um, she was in Mr. Glass and she's like, I don't know if it's just the way she looks or her acting skills, but she plays a like kind of crazy person with problems beautifully. And in this in this movie, the character definitely has some problems. Um, the character's name is Magic, I think. She plays a girl, a little girl, probably like four or five that gets abused by these slender man looking people. And um, she goes to like her special place in her head to get away from it and everything. I just think it works. The, her character is awesome. Her powers are pretty cool. And then she doesn't just go, oh, I have powers now, so this doesn't bother me anymore. She has a traumatic experience as a child. And when these people show up again in her life, even though she doesn't think that it's real or it might not be real, we can't tell as an audience member, um, she breaks down and is in fear. And, you know, that's normal traumatic stuff happens and even though you're past it, it even if you have powers or not you know she could slice down these people with her like laser sword or whatever is got going on with her arm um she can do that very easily but uh this script does a good job at um using her backstory to their advantage and making it a little more um realistic and you, you're able to feel for the character in this movie i think all of the characters um they they play a great perform they have a great performance they play amazing as their uh, characters and there wasn't a single uh, supporting cast member that was boring I enjoyed seeing every single one of these um, these kids well I I think they're in their twenties because in movies twenty year olds always play teenagers for some reason I don't know it's just a thing in Hollywood but anyway these um, these kids essentially they are very enjoyable when you watch them on screen none of them are boring. Um, you know, I, it, it didn't feel like there was one person who everyone else was just trying to like support and just 
bring up like i said earlier in the movie um the main um the main character danny she uh she's okay in the film but by no means is it like oh i want to see her on the screen the entire time the supporting cast does an amazing job with their story their script and everything i love love the fact that they did the buffy the vampire slayers references and shout outs um and as a way to foreshadow what's going on what's going to happen in the um in in the future of the film uh when i saw the buffy the vampire slayer um the episode where the witch uh with powers and stuff you, you know they're lesbian in that in that tv show and they're kissing and stuff i'm like oh okay so rain is gonna be attracted to the main character like it was a good foreshadow and i just like the fact that they just threw in that buffy buffy the vampire slayer reference is pretty cool and then they do it again when um the slender slender man i don't know why that uh word is so hard for me to say i apologize the slender man people are gonna come back you see the buffy the vampire slayer episode where these uh these creepy guys that always smile or holding buffy and i could pretty much tell from that that uh, the slender man people were gonna come up next it was just like a good little note to throw in there i, I appreciated it and it was just kind of funny um one of the bad things, and it's not a huge thing, but when the when the director uses flashbacks 10 or 15 minutes actually after the event already happened, I think it's kind of a waste of a flashback. I think the audience is smart enough to know, okay, we just saw that maybe 15, 20 minutes ago. We don't need a flashback. I know they do it for emotional connection, and you can see um, Danny. She's doing a flashback to when her um, her her dad died. Um, it, it's okay, and I understand that you're trying to get the audience on the side of the main character, but just the use of flashbacks to support an emotional connection, I think it should only be made until the end of the film because there's no need to show them what just happened. I know it was like 15, 20 minutes, but I still think that that's too soon for a flashback. That's just my personal opinion. You know, if you guys have different opinions, let me know. This movie had great pace. It was a great story, had great characters, great um actors and actresses for imdb and rotten tomatoes to give it 29 percent or 50 60 percent i think that's terrible um this movie was definitely worth watching i would go and watch this movie again even though i know what's going to happen it's almost like a mystery movie where we don't know the the, the main character's uh, powers and we're trying to figure that out with the the cast members at the time or with the characters at the time and i like I, I like that fact personally that i don't know more than the people or the characters that are that are in the movie and we're both trying to figure it out at the same time because it lets us take that kind of mystery direction and we take clues from what the uh what the movie's showing us and so do the the characters so it's kind of it's nice to see that um we're doing a play-by-play -play and we can put ourselves into the movie as one of the characters trying to figure it out as opposed to them just throwing some dialogue and saying oh this happened because of this i think it's really really lazy and i'm glad that this movie doesn't do it very often when whenever you have a superhero movie obviously you're going to use cgi but i don't think that they overuse it too much um obviously at the end of the movie they're showing everybody's powers and throughout this movie you get a little glimpse of everyone's powers but they use some practical effects the character rain she transforms into a wolf whenever we see her as a wolf for the most part in this movie it's an actual wolf it's not some cgi wolf like they don't need to put uh, a, a computer animated wolf in this movie the entire time we're able to get some practical effects now when henry zaga as sunspot in this movie he's on um he's on the screen and we're having to see his powers obviously he's going to be cgi there's no way around that you can't do a whole lot of practical effects with that and even even though you can't do a whole lot of practical effects with him turning into basically the sun it's like the human torch you know when he gets warm even a little bit we see when he's swimming and stuff there's steam coming off his body that looks like a practical effect you know you don't need to have a whole bunch of cgi on that i love the fact that we see the um the flashback to uh the movie logan it's an x-men movie if you guys i'm pretty sure you guys have seen it but if not go check it out logan it's the last um it's the last wolverine movie and in that movie they have um a a woman who worked at this research facility she's um recording on her phone um these kids who are basically uh trapped and caged and they're um they're super um mutants and they're still trying to figure out their powers and it's showing how this research company um is trying to take these kids and make them into violent killers and they throw that um a few of those slides into this movie and it really ties it together well so we know that 
um, the New Mutants movie and Logan are in the same universe because they're uh, it has a similar character. So I, I just think that that's awesome. Um, Logan had some references to the old X-Men movies, especially the first one where they're talking about them fighting at the Statue of Liberty. Um, and then this movie ties into Logan. So that would assume that the entire X-Men movies, I know the whole time travel thing gets a bit wonky, but it would mean that this one is also in the same cinematic universe as the others, which is super awesome. This isn't just a standalone movie like the Joker where they have obviously Batman in the in the Joker universe, but it's not tied to like the Dark Knight movies or anything like that. So kudos to them. So the ending of this movie was pretty good. Um, you know, Dr. Reyes dies from the wolf, but her whole power is protective uh, barriers. So why couldn't she just do a protective barrier whenever she heard the wolf coming? It's not like she didn't know it was, or I'm sorry, the bear. It's not like she didn't know that the bear was coming. Like, obviously she knew. So why couldn't she just do a force field around herself? I don't know. I don't know. But, um, you know, she she died. It's OK. And then at the very end, the bear is trying to attack all of the main character's friends. And then she wakes up and somehow is able to control the bear now. And it's like under her command. Um, I get what they were trying to go through her controlling her fear. So now she's in control of her powers. Uh, it was OK. Not not the worst ending. It could have been better, but it wasn't, you know, super terrible that it takes away anything from this movie. The, all the characters, they walk off of the uh, the hospital together and then it leaves like a cliffhanger of what's to come next. So you can definitely make a second movie to this. I thought it was pretty good. You know, um, I would love to see another movie just like this. I would love love for um, for Fox or I don't know if Fox owns all the mutants. I'm pretty sure they do. But if Fox makes another um another movie as a sequel to this because the cast is awesome um, the story the script was well I would give it an easy 8.5 um, it was definitely worth watching and definitely worth watching again um, you guys I can't encourage you guys enough to watch this movie and at least give it um, give it the benefit of the doubt please because this movie it does not deserve a 29% Rotten Tomatoes set. I don't know what algorithm or who is doing the whole percentages for Rotten Tomatoes, but they, they're they just... it's Don't go based on Rotten Tomatoes. Don't, don't see what the movie reviews are from Rotten Tomatoes in order to judge whether you should go out to the movies and watch a movie or not because their algorithm is so messed up. They give movies that lean a little left a lot more rating than ones that go right and I, I, I don't know it's, it seems like a kind of a political thing to me and I would think that you would judge a movie based on what it brings to the table a little bit more that's just me um, call me crazy but uh, yeah easy 8.5 you guys should definitely watch this movie again I might go and see it in, uh, here in a week or two again it was really that good um, you know, I hope this ties in more to the cinematic universe of X-Men and Marvel and all that. And I'm hoping that with phase five of the Avengers stuff uh, that they bring this in and that's how they introduce these uh, mutants into the uh, the world of the Avengers. I really do. Uh, that's going to be it for me, guys. Um, if you like this video and you stuck with me this long, please give it a like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. You can follow me on Instagram at Palacio Fitness and uh, we have a Twitter, Palacio Studio. Uh, as soon as these videos come up, that's the first place that I'm going to be promoting them. So if you guys like these videos, please follow me on there and we'll get um, get them to you as fast as we can. I'm really, really, really trying to do more videos. Um, I just started paramedic school, so it's a little hard for me, but I'm going to try to do these. Um, for the podcast and everything, these movie reviews are some of my favorite, if not the most favorite thing to do, because I, I am in love with uh, cinematography. I, am, I love going to the movie theater and watching movies, everything that comes out and getting super nerdy in with it. So um, please, please um, sub uh, subscribe to us and check us out. Um, I'll try to get more videos out if I can. I'm going to try to do one at least a week. So that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, don't forget to go to the gym and lift something heavy. Peace.